Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about SIBO, in particular, SIBO breath testing, and why I think this is the most useless, the most worthless test that exists on planet Earth. Long story short, to summarize, there's nothing that a SIBO breath test is going to tell you that your symptoms don't tell you. You know, you know when you eat prebiotic fibers, like if you eat high FODMAPs, or if you even wanted to to do it exactly the way that they're doing the test, you could take a glucose solution or you could take a lactulose solution. I mean, you don't really need to do that. You, you already know if you're reacting to FODMAPs that it's going to cause a similar kind of reaction. And you, you spend money, you know, 100, 160, 200, maybe even 250 pounds, dollars, euros, just to get this yes or no when you eat when you're eating fiber are you producing gas and yes they can test is it is it hydrogen is it methane or is it hydrogen sulfide again completely useless because you can tell this just with your symptoms if it's producing hydrogen you first of all there's going to be a larger volume of gas you're going to be very gassy and you're going to have a tendency towards uh, diarrhea if you're producing methane then basically what happens is if you're producing methane gas you are also producing hydrogen gas but what's happening is certain bacteria in your gut are taking that hydrogen gas are like working on it and basically eating it and producing methane methane instead so if you have meth methane being produced you also have hydrogen being produced but you've got this extra layer which is usually produced by by archaea or methanogens which are a different type of organism anyway you don't need to know that if your methane's high you're going to be getting you're also going to be getting a lot of gas you're probably going to be feeling a motility problem this could be like uh, reduced motility in small intestine so this would be like low, lower appetite or just feeling really full or or constipation like surprise surprise low motility equals constipation and if you've got hydrogen sulfide like you can smell that you don't need a test to tell you if you're producing producing hydrogen sulfide because you will smell it every time you pass gas so what is the point of doing this test i'm, I'm going to tell you it's it was really helpful when SIBO was being kind of, you could say, discovered or invented because up until 5, 10, 15 years ago, SIBO did not exist as a new diagnostic. It was it was IBS and IBS is even more useless than the diagnostic of SIBO. I, I still really don't like SIBO, but at least in a way it is more helpful than IBS because IBS is literally, you have irritable bowels and we have no idea why and we don't know what you should do about it and maybe you should take more fiber at least with SIBO they're saying okay you've got IBS you've got some kind of digestive disorder this could be potentially connected to a, a dysbiosis a, it through the lens of SIBO an overgrowth in your small intestine and we can do something about this you know maybe maybe a fiber supplement isn't the best idea for you maybe we should reduce your fiber maybe we should go low FODMAP and maybe we should try adding some antimicrobials this is one step closer towards a helpful diagnostic label. I still really don't like it. I really don't like SIBO. It's really unhelpful because you will see this and leave me a comment if this is you. What usually happens, you get a diagnosis of SIBO. Okay, great. Bring on the antibiotics. You know, this is usually the rifaximin, which, which they say only works in your small intestine because it works with bile. It's not true. It can, it can disrupt your microbiome significantly in different areas of your gut as well. And even killing things in your small intestine, uh, you really have to change this idea of SIBO and change it into this idea of dysbiosis, of imbalance. And when you go in and you're just nuking the, the organisms in your gut with antibiotics, you just create a further, a further a dysbiosis, a further imbalance. It's like, it just doesn't make any, any, any sense to me. But, but it does, because I understand when you have the diagnostic label SIBO, you hear small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and you think bacteria overgrowing you have to kill it and that's where that comes from and that's why i hate this diagnostic label it's very unhelpful change it instead to small intestinal dysbiosis and dysbiosis is also more helpful as well because if you have a SIBO situation you also potentially have a CFO situation where your your microflora around fungus is is imbalanced as well very common with if you've had either amalgam fillings, so you there's a very high likelihood that you'll develop like H. pylori or candida as an adaptive response to to mercury in your teeth coming into your gut, and also mold. Mold mycotoxins completely imbalances your your microbiome, but also like from bacteria, but also your microbiome from your from from yeasts as well. So it's more helpful if we look at this as an imbalance. 
But even further, okay, you're imbalanced. Okay, how do we correct the balance? What went wrong in the first place? We have to identify where the dysfunction originated. SIBO is never a root cause. It's always an adaptive response or a downstream symptom. So even in functional and alternative medicine, they're always saying, chase the root cause, chase the root cause, chase the root cause, chase the root cause. And they're like, oh, your root cause is SIBO. No, it's not. And this is another reason that I really don't like it because it's not a root cause. There's always something else. It's either stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, or mucosa. There's dysfunction in one of these five, these, I call these the five pillars, the five pillars of your, of your digestive system because this is how your gut works. You have dysfunction in one of these five areas and, and obviously an imbalance in your microbiome. And you can't have SIBO without an imbalance. We need to trace it to the root cause. We need to figure out what that is. We need to address that. We need to su support the dysfunction wherever it is in which of the, whichever of these five pillars. And then we need to try and bring balance back again. And if you're going to kill things, if you're going to use antibiotics, if you're going to use antifungals, if you're going to use antimicrobial herbs, this is like the absolute last stage when you already have full spectrum digestive support. You've got probiotics going in there, be that you're at the first stage where you're using potentially like spore-based organisms, or if you're already onto using uh, the, the colonizing, like the lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium organisms, wherever you're at in that, like antimicrobials are the last stage, not the first. If you start killing things from the start, I, I, I'll, t I'll tell you, I work with a lot of people that go through this, this model, you know, of here's the antibiotics, here's the antimicrobials, here's the antifungals, and it works for some people, that's a small percentage. For some other people, it works initially, you know, you get a, a, maybe a year of relief and then like you're back there. You've got the symptoms again. You'll have a, a flare up. You'll have a, uh, your symptoms will all come back. Your SIBO will come back. And it's because you didn't address the root cause of that problem. And actually, when you, when you treat SIBO without addressing the root cause, as SIBO is very often an adaptive response, you're actually hurting your body's natural healing ability. Again, symptoms are your body attempting to adapt and survive in a certain situation. And if SIBO is your adaptive response and you kill it, you're inhibiting your body's ability to adapt and survive. I've had, I think, two or three clients that I've spoken with in the last month that have used, they've gone through this generic having SIBO, take antibiotics, antimicrobials, and potentially te temporary relief, but this actually ends up creating even more severe health problems in the long term. One of the things that triggered me from going from a SIBO, CIFO situation into a full, complete systemic collapse into chronic fatigue syndrome, several autoimmune disorders, my digestive system completely shut down and I had to go on a really restrictive diet of five foods, was trying to treat the SIBO, CIFO situation after a breath test, surprise, surprise, with, with antibiotics and then months and months of, of antimicrobial herbs. And if you do, and I'm not saying never use these things, but I'm saying if you're using them and you're using them in a SIBO context, they're all the way at the end. They're the last stage. And I will, I will, I will say, I have another client that we've worked through. He has gut dysbiosis problems, histamine issues, and we've worked through, we've done the probiotics, we've built the digestive support, we've, we've done all of these things first, and he's made a lot, like considerable progress. And the final step of his journey is tackling uh, gut-based yeasts, and you use antimicrobials to do this. But this is not the first step. This is the last step. You know, he earned the right to be able to do this and it to actually be helpful by doing the six months of work that led up to it by doing all of these other things. And now he's doing this and he's getting these final layers of his healing, healing process. So it's not about never use it, but when you hear SIBO, this is what you jump to first and that's not the right way to do it. it, it I really don't like it. It's really unhelpful. If there's one thing I could just ban for 2024, it would be like get, throw SIBO out the window. I hate it. I really don't like it. It's really unhelpful. I hope you found this really interesting. Hope you found this helpful. If you need any help with anything that I talked about in this video, leave me a comment below or shoot me a, a message if you're watching on Facebook or send me an email if you're watching on YouTube. Support at williamdickinson.co.uk or you can just go on my website, williamdickinson.co.uk. There's like a contact form so you can message me. Let me know if you need anything. Take care and happy healing you see, bye. Ciao.